Okay, so in the previous video, we enrolled an iOS device and that worked. But we still need to enroll a Windows device to see if everything we set up and configured in the earlier videos works. For this video, I've got a Windows virtual machine for the endpoint device. Shall we? As I mentioned in the preceding video, we are not going to use email auto discovery for enrollment in this video, but that is what you should do. If email auto discovery is not configured, users will need to know the org group ID and server name. To find the group ID, administrators can select the organization in the Workspace ONE UEM console, and then click Groups and Settings, Groups, Organization Groups, Details. And here is the group ID in the group ID field. For server name, users need to know the name of the Workspace ONE UEM server, even though they will be using Workspace ONE access to authenticate. What I mean is, even though you set the source of authentication for Intelligent Hub to Workspace ONE Access, that is not the server name users should use when they enroll. Users need the Workspace ONE UEM server. We're in the Workspace ONE UEM console here, and so here is the server name for my instance of Workspace ONE UEM. All right, now that we've got the org group ID and server name sorted out, let's go to the Windows 10 virtual machine. It's recommended to use a virtual machine rather than a physical machine if you're doing an evaluation or proof of concept. You especially don't want to be enrolling the same Windows machine that you will be using for logging into Workspace ONE UEM and managing the machine. You don't want your machine to be both the chicken and the egg. Another reason to use something like VMware Workstation, as I've used here to create my virtual machine, is that you can take a VM snapshot before you enroll the machine, and then if you want to later, you can revert back to that snapshot. Okay, so open a browser on the endpoint and go to https colon slash slash getws1.com. Click Download Hub for Windows. Once it's downloaded, click Open File to run the installer. Click Next on the welcome page, accept the license agreement, click Install. Click Yes in the UAC box. I've sped things up a little bit for this video. Click Finish. And then you can start the Intelligent Hub. Here's where you enter that fully qualified server name. Click Next. Here's where you enter the group ID. Click Next. Select the user's domain from the list. Click Next. And here the username is just the username and password because the domain was already selected. Click Sign In. Now occasionally when enrolling, I've gotten a second login box, not all the time. If you see something like this, the thing is you need to enter the domain name as part of the username since there's no domain list. Enter the domain name without the .com, backslash, and username, and password, and click Submit. After a while, you get prompted about letting the app collect information about your usage. I'm going to say not now. And congratulations. Click Done. Okay, it says it's busy installing Notepad++. Click Get Started, and the Intelligent Hub app opens. Click Apps, and it shows that Notepad++, the native app I deployed as shown in another video, has been installed. And I have the Salesforce web app, which I configured in Workspace ONE Access, as shown in another video. We'll click Salesforce and see if the single sign-on I configured works. Yes, it did. Success. All right, let's go back and explore the Intelligent Hub app some more. Click Support and click the device under My Devices. I can sync my device. It's enrolled. It's compliant. And under Profiles, there's the password profile and the Windows user cert profile I configured in some earlier videos. And then let's drill down some more. Click the user icon, and let's look at the hub status. And there's just tons of information, including the location of the log files. Now I just want to show you what it looks like to an administrator after the device is enrolled. We're back in the Workspace ONE UEM console on the Devices dashboard. 
This is showing the Windows device I just enrolled and an iOS device that I also enrolled, as shown in an earlier video. Click List View to see the list of devices. Green means connected, red means disconnected. Scroll to the right and we can see that both devices are compliant. Click the Windows device name to go to the Details page, Summary tab, and drill down on a whole bunch of information. It says there's two profiles installed and two apps. A couple of certificates. The Compliance tab shows that the device was checked for a minimum OS version. The Profiles tab shows the Windows Password Profile and the Windows User Cert Profile for SSO we created in other videos. I don't think I have baselines. The Apps tab shows the apps that are installed and managed. Updates shows OS updates found on the device. And click More for a list of everything. For more Workspace ONE technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.omnisa.com.